Hey there, family. Welcome back to another episode. I'm Kay. And I'm Shyla, And we are your real life sisters that real life love you. And we are bringing a real life topic forward this week. Ooh, this topic is real life because we are talking all about discipline and can't wait to dive in. So stay tuned to today's episode all about discipline. We're going to share some of our stories, some of our best tips, and some of the things we've learned along the way. So let's buckle up and get ready for discipline. All right, fam, we're talking all about discipline today and this week. But before we get into it, I have a little sister confession to make. And that is the fact that uh, I was obsessed with learning how to spell things as a kid. And discipline was a really tough word for me. So I used to pronounce it in my head as disc eyepline because I knew that I could spell it if I went disc eyepline. So uh, every time you hear discipline today, just know that in my mind, I'm thinking disc eyepline. Well, here we are. I am 37 years old and just fine. <laughs> finding this out about my little sister. So I actually do that with words too, but I've never done that with this word. And that's actually a good word for you because it is, it's weirdly spelled, um, but it is, it is not weirdly embraced because this is a hot topic that a lot of people talk about. Now, when, when we say the word discipline, lots of us conjure up different things and let's first talk about those definitions. And then we're going to talk about maybe uh, other words that you like to use instead of discipline, but discipline, really, if we look it up in Merriam Webster, we've got several lists of definitions here. The first one is being controlled gain, or, or I'm sorry, control gained by enforcing obedience or order. So we think about that, right? Control gained by enforcing obedience or order. So it's pretty much in alignment, right? We're trying to control like self-discipline is what most of us are imagining as we ta- tackle a topic like discipline. The second one is punishment. That's also right. Like the, the child gets disciplined for the behavior. And then the third one that's most relevant to our subject here is training that corrects molds or perfects the mental faculties or moral character. So the training that perfects our moral character. And you know, we're all about character development here, which means that we're kind of using all three of these definitions, but discipline, as you're listening to those things and you think, I don't like discipline or discipline's oversold or it's overused, like you might call it integrity. You might call it responsibility. You might call it your values. What we're really talking about is whatever that mental faculty is, the mechanism that you use to keep yourself accountable to doing what it is that you said you're going to do. That's the feature that we're talking about today when we say discipline. A lot of people get the ideas of motivation and discipline mixed up. Now, recently, we were reminded of this concept in a book called Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. And he talks a lot in this book about the difference between motivation and discipline, right? Because it's easy to get motivated, right? I I get motivated whenever I see an Instagram post of somebody who inspires me and I have like a little 30 second burst of like, yeah, I'm motivated. Uh, But sometimes we can find ourselves scrolling right beyond that, losing that motivation quickly and boom, it goes away. Motivation isn't really something that necessarily lasts. Now you can use motivation to get started, but it's your discipline and your willpower that keeps you going when the going gets tough. There's a, um, a saying that I know we've always really liked, and you'll probably like it too, especially around this topic, right? There's two types of pain. There's the ty- there's the pain of regret for not doing things, or there's the pain of discipline, which means doing things now for a later payoff. Either way, you get pain. Pain is a part of life. Um, and in another week, we'll talk about the separation between pain and suffering that's been really helpful for us. But knowing that pain is a part of life means that we, get to, we can choose which kind of pain that we're going to receive. We can either get the default pain of regret, but staying comfortable in the now, which is really where that piece comes in about that comfortable comfortability, or we get that pain of discipline, that pain of saying, I'm going to run the miles because I said I was going to run them. I'm going to load the dishwasher because I said I was going to do that on Tuesday afternoon. I'm going to complete the assignment before I get on Instagram because that is what I have determined I'm going to do. So that piece there, that pain of discipline, it only weighs ounces where pain of regret weighs tons but you don't experience it till later. Oh, I'm so glad that you brought that forward, Shai, that discipline can be painful because it's not necessarily fun to have your alarm go 
off at 4.45 a.m. and drag yourself out of that warm, cozy bed and into the freezing cold so you can put on your shoes and go out to your cold garage and go run six miles like Shyla does every single day. <laughs> like it, that's not necessarily fun, right? But discipline keeps you moving forward even when it's not fun. Now, we're not saying that the activities that you're engaging in that require discipline are always not fun. You know, when Shyla and I got to run the Disney Princess half marathon in 2020, that running was real fun. But sometimes the discipline to show up when things aren't fun allows you the opportunity to do more later. We've heard this encapsulated in the concept that discipline actually equals freedom. I love that concept because I think freedom is what, when we boil it down to that feeling that most of us are after, right? Why do you want the job? Why do you want the marriage? Why do you want the achievements or the accolades? You want the freedom to choose what you want to do, when you want to do it, with who you want to do it, right? That's freedom. So lots of us are after that freedom and it can feel counterintuitive to imagine that discipline and freedom can actually not only be related, but have a cause and effect relationship, but through discipline, through structure, through accountability, through those standards or commitment, again, whatever word we want to call it, through that ability to follow through on that commitment is what will allow us to move to that other side and get that freedom because we've stayed um, dedicated to the structure that we've put in place. Now, let's just bring this into a practical example. Let's say that you are starting a business and you're an entrepreneur. Now, you are a disciplined an entrepreneur who shows up for your business every day. You have non-negotiable things that you do. You respond to all of the communications within your realm and you're consistently working on your business. Now, some days you get leads, you get sales, you're closing deals. It feels good. Other days are a slog, but you're still showing up. Now, that might not feel like freedom in the moment because you're likely working more than eight hours on something that isn't giving you a great return. However, the discipline of showing up to that entrepreneurial venture in the beginning, day in and day out, and giving it the attention that it deserves can allow that entrepreneurial venture to get up and running, start sustaining itself, and hopefully get to a place where another leader can step in and give you the opportunity to not only have time freedom, but financial freedom freedom too. So instead of taking the freedom of the moment, you secure your freedom for the future. Oh, that is beautifully said. Um, and, you know, discipline really determines that outcome. And I love that discipline is kind of where that it, the rubber hits the road. Lots of us have good, good ideas. Most of us have good intentions. We all want to achieve the same things and work towards those same things. But the difference maker is those who do and those who do not, right? Like the proof is in the pudding, if you will. There, It's almost doesn't count. We know that we've got to get over that finish line, that we have to take those behaviors, that we have to engage in those actions. And that discipline piece, I feel, is really that transformative piece of taking the intention, the thought, the belief, the motivation, the desire, and turning it into the result, the outcome, the action, the do power that it takes to get it over that finish line. And those who are disciplined, they have results that speak for themselves. They don't necessarily need to use words. If somebody is physically disciplined, you can look at their body and know that they've got a discipline around that, uh, around exercising and eating healthy. If someone is disciplined in their business, their books are going to show it. Their results are going to show it. Their growth is going to show it. And I think in the space of entrepreneurship, discipline really becomes one of the hardest pieces to master because you're only being accountable to yourself, which means if you're not going to hold yourself to that standard of getting the thing done, of responding to the email, of getting the proposal done, then no one's going to hold you to it. And you might fizzle on what it is you're trying to achieve. So discipline is one of those things so that because it requires you to get uncomfortable, if you were with us last week, you heard us talk about that inner narrator, that inner roommate, that when you activate it for the first time, right? Shyla said that you can see the results of disciplined people in the way that they show up, but maybe you haven't been disciplined up until this point. Maybe you've been a, a little lackadaisical or chosen the freedom of the moment instead of the freedom of the future. Oh, well, that's okay. Uh, we have too. And there are ways that you can move beyond that and transform yourself. But know this, the voice inside your head, again, is there to keep you comfortable. It wants you to stay at whatever your comfort stasis is. And so when you start to activate discipline for yourself, much like when you're disciplining a toddler, your voice can get real loud, <laughs> real loud. Yeah. 
It can. It's got a lot to say because it's screaming to keep you comfortable. And if you're trying to form a new habit or get a new result, that means new actions and different behaviors. And that's where that voice screams. So we are, we're usually experiencing this little bit of strife on the inside as we attempt to grow something or as we attempt to build the discipline muscle in any one area. Now, uh, we would wager that there's likely some area of your life that you already are really disciplined in. Maybe you have really strong relationships. You are excellent at reaching out to your parents on a weekly basis. You have excellent communication with your kids or your spouse or your friends. You've got strong relationships. Maybe yours is that physical piece, right? You've got that unlock. You feel good about that. Maybe yours is a spiritual discipline. You meditate that five minutes every day. You connect with nature in ways that fill your soul. You find ways that that spiritually you are disciplined or Maybe it's in uh, your business, right? That's where in your career, in your business, you've been able to flex that discipline muscle and gain those results. So there's probably somewhere in your life and definitely in your past that you can see the results of discipline. And once you can prove to yourself that you've had that discipline before, it's easier to build it from there. And right after this quick short break, we're going to dive into how you can do that next. Do you want what you want sooner rather than later? Do you find yourself growing more effectively in environments where people are growing alongside you? Well, we have the conference for you. Do you love going to events as much as we do? Then you want to be in the room for the Further Faster Conference happening October 29th and October 30th in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, the Further Faster Conference is headlined by our dear friend, mentor, and business partner, Joseph McClendon III. And trust us, you're going to want to be in the room. This is two days jam-packed of material that will help you grow personally and professionally. And if you're wondering how to make a million dollars in 10 years, you have to be in the room to hear the strategy that Joseph is going to share. It is phenomenal. Go to neuroencoding.com slash FFC to learn more about the Further Faster Conference coming at the end of October. We hope to see you in Vegas. And now back to the show. If you're hearing all this culture talk and want to be a part of a thriving, growing culture, we want to invite you to be a part of Squeeze In. Squeeze In Franchising offers you the chance to bring a culture and a vibe like Squeeze In to your community. You can make money. You can get time freedom for you and your family. We would love to have you as part of our Squeeze In family. Join us in the ownership team and go to squeezein.com slash franchising. You're enjoying this episode on Angel Phoenix Productions Podcast Network. To explore a complete lineup of quality programs and media production services, head on over to angelphoenix.com or like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Angel Phoenix Productions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sisters. I get it. Discipline's important. Mm -hmm. I need it. But how do I cultivate it in my life? That's what we're going to talk about here next. Right. Strategies for discipline. You heard us alluding to one right before the break there. That is reminding yourself of things that you are currently or in the past already disciplined about to prove to yourself and to maybe that inner narration that you have what it takes, that you can do this, that you have set yourself up in in the past to succeed, that you've set a standard and you've held yourself to that standard, even when you didn't feel like it. And I think that's really where most of us lean into discipline is that when you don't feel like doing something, how do you get yourself to do it? That's discipline. Well, there's all kinds of ways that you can get yourself to do something. But one of the ways that we have loved employing over this last uh, almost a decade now that this material has been available is Mel Robbins' five second rule. If you've never heard of Mel Robbins, we would highly suggest you take a look at her book, The Five Second Rule, or you can just watch her TED Talk where she kind of accidentally spills it. But what she talks about uh, in her TED Talk and in the book is that she counts herself down from five and then launches herself into action like a rocket ship into anything that she needs to do in order to counteract maybe the inner narrative that's fighting against the discipline in the moment. Right. That's a great way to get yourself to just do it before you feel, quote, ready. And turns out neuroscience also backs up this claim. Five seconds is less time than it can take for that logical piece of your brain to defend your comfortability. And it allows you to circumvent that process and get in front of it. So even if you're laying in bed and you're like, OMG, I don't want to get up and go work out, start the countdown five, four, three, two, one, and get those feet on the floor. Because once you get going, it can be easier to 
take those next steps. If you let more than five seconds elongate, oh, you can kick into high gear there. That justification machine starts firing out all those justifiers of why you don't need to do it. Today's not the right day. That injury is still healing. You didn't sleep great. Whatever all of those things are can start to bubble up. So the faster you can get into that action mode, the the safer you are in terms of protecting what it is you said you're going to do. Now, if you're already in action mode, a really cool trick that you can use for yourself to keep going, right? This is an endurance exercise. Maybe you're running, maybe you're on a bike, maybe you're getting your emails done, is that when that little toddler, you're in the middle of it, right? And the the inner toddler starts going like, well, I don't want to. When's it going to be over? How long till we're finished, right? And start squirming. Count yourself up to seven. Give yourself an opportunity. If you start to feel that I'm going to quit feeling because it's getting hard, give yourself seven seconds of just inner counting before you make the decision to quit or not. Look, if you get up to seven, quit, have at it. But most of the times when we give ourselves the opportunity, when that inner toddler starts going, no, I don't like it, stop it. And you give yourself one, two, three, chances are you're going to opt to keep going instead of backing down from the moment. What's amazing about discipline is the more you practice it, the stronger it gets. But this also becomes the baseline for your confidence. When you are disciplined, when you say you're going to do something and you hold that word to yourself, you are a confident, secure, grounded person in who you are, no matter what situation you go into. Of course, there's caveats and changes and personal preferences and all of those things. But by and large, as human beings, the more often we are congruent with who we say we are and how we behave in those ways, the more confident we are to show up in a space and be completely and authentically ourselves. So discipline builds a lot of confidence for ourselves because it helps us know that we're going to be true to our word no matter what. Now, your discipline's default is in alignment with your identity, not necessarily your ideals, but your identity, right? Who do you identify as? If you, like Shyla, identify as a runner, it makes it easier to get up every single day and get on that treadmill in the morning. But if you identify as a couch potato and you're proud of that fact that you love your TV, you get your four hours in every night, but you want to be the type of person who exercises and uses their time more wisely, your discipline level will default to the level of that internal character uh, without you even realizing it. And so if you want to know where you can focus, take a look at your results um, and then understand that you have to kind of take care of some of this underlying identity bit before your discipline can fall fully in the line. The identity bit really came forward for us when we read the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. Highly recommend one of our top two books when it comes to building discipline. The other being, as you heard Kay mention earlier, David Goggins, Can't Hurt Me, but Atomic Atomic Habits uh, in, by James Clear brings forward this piece that uh, habits are the foundation of our character. And the character that we are is really built upon those habits and those daily votes with our actions and behaviors of who we are and who we want to be. Now, our identity, our human personality is one of the strongest forces in the world. We will do just about anything consciously or subconsciously to stay in alignment with our identity. So examining what is it that I identify myself as? What are those characteristics? What are those character traits that I really identify as being me will help you see where you're congruent with building discipline and where maybe you've got some things that are coming up against each other, right? Like if you say my identity is that I uh, love to go clubbing, but you're wanting to build more of a well-rounded holistic life, then those two things might not be congruent. Whichever one you put actions towards are going to be the votes towards towards that character and who you're building to be. And so at least understanding the identity piece allows you to oftentimes treat the cause and not the symptom when you're lacking in discipline. Now, our dear mentor, Joseph McClendon III, talks a lot about how building the self-discipline to do what you say you're going to do is really integral in building that self-belief, right? Shyla talked about confidence earlier, but this allows your character and your words and your thoughts to all line up. 
which allows you, like Shai said, to show up authentically and to do hard things because you're capable. Like we've said already, you, you can probably find places in your life that you've had the discipline to show up, even if it was for something silly, right? Uh, like, oh, I don't mean to call it silly, but many people out there show up for video games like it's life or death, right? You have rave night at 6 p.m. every Tuesday and you're disciplined about being on that rave night and you want to start a habit of exercising. Now, those two things, Things that might not necessarily be congruent, but you can lean on the discipline that you've shown in the other area in order to build your discipline in another one and ultimately create the character that you're most proud of so you can show up authentically and how you want. One of the best ways to build discipline is through crafting and creating your environment to support your success, right? If if discipline for you means I need to shut everything out and work on this term paper, work on this proposal, work on this book, work on this assignment, then set your environment up for success, right? Those distractions, those alerts on your phone, those, uh, right, like uh, my dogs are often a distraction, but I know I can set them up in a way that's going to keep them out of the room or out of my hair for a while if I really need to dive in and dive onto something. So set up your environment for success so that you can stay dedicated, right? Like um, in, in business, we like to say, keep honest people honest. What does that mean? That means that we're, we're going to just put all the alcohol in a locked cage, that we're going to put a camera facing the back door, not because we believe anyone is bad intrinsically, but if they're walking by the back door and there's that six pack of beer and you know there's no camera there and that beer's not locked up, you might just... Uh, uh, commit a crime of convenience, right? So we want to keep honest people honest. Keep disciplined people disciplined by setting up your environment for success and eliminating as many distractions as possible so that you can ultimately fulfill yourself on what it is you said you're going to do. That is such a great piece of advice, Shai. Setting yourself up from the beginning can be a really important step in continuing that discipline down the line. One of the other things that you can do at that beginning phase to help set yourself up for success is to know where you might buckle and have a plan in place. Understand what might challenge you on the disciplinary road that you have ahead and have a little bit of a plan in place. And we're going to talk a little bit about something called non-negotiables later in this week. Uh, but one of those things for me is washing my face at the end of the day. And this is a discipline I've had to put into place over the last three years very intentionally. Now, one of the hurdles that I know for me happens is when I lie myself down in bed. I do not want to get back up again. And so before I even put myself into bed or lay myself on the bed to have social time with my family, I make sure that I'm washing my face because I've identified that as a speed bump for myself ahead of time and can tackle it more effectively in the moment. What an excellent demonstration of setting up your environment and your circumstances for your ultimate success so that you can stay disciplined and stay true to who it is that you want to be in the future and what actions you want to take on a daily basis. And I'm excited to dive into our mini this week as we wrap up on the main topic here. Discipline is such a huge topic and it's something that all of us have to work on. So you're strong in some areas, you're weak in others, um, and, and there's lots of strategies and writing around this, but we just hope to kind of unpack and, uh, and examine this subject a little bit more with some personal stories, some historical examples, and some fun things you won't want to miss. So remember to stay tuned the rest of the week and catch all of the mini episodes. And you know all of this comes with love from your sisters, Kay and Shy. This podcast was a production of Angel Phoenix Productions. Explore more episodes of this show or other great shows on the Angel Phoenix Podcast Network by visiting angelphoenix.com. The views expressed in this show do not necessarily represent those of Angel Phoenix Productions or its advertisers and may contain language that's unsuitable for younger listeners.